Viridian, The Green Guide, by Clouds, My Head in the Clouds Not Coming Down, read by Oak Shadow 5. Chapter 8, Looking Ahead. Summary, Izuku gets some practice with his new signature weapon. Izuku kept an eye on the clock and put all his books away five minutes before school ended. He saw some of the other students shooting him looks as, as the seconds ticked away and swallowed out thickly. Hopefully he really had been getting faster since becoming a vigilante because he wasn't looking forward to what would happen to him if he didn't manage to get away in time. The bell was like the gun at the beginning of a race and Izuku was out of the room before most of his classmates had even grabbed their bags. From there, it was just rushing to his locker, then out the door. The only one who could even hope to catch up to him at this point would be Karchan, but Izuku hoped that his luck would hold and Karchan would just go home, like he'd been doing for the last few weeks. He didn't know why Karchan seemed to be taking it easy on him, but maybe he'd finally realized that Izuku didn't have any hope of being better than him. Maybe if Izuku kept his head down, then Karchan wouldn't see him as a threat and he'd keep leaving him alone. It was almost too much to hope for. Mom was at work when he got home, so he sent a quick text saying that he was going to go watch hero fights as he got changed, then grabbed a slingshot and a few dozen marbles and walked out the door. He needed to get used to his new weapon, considering he'd never actually used a slingshot before, and it might just be his poor self-esteem talking. But somehow he didn't think that the middle of a fight was the best time to practice his aim. Hence why he was going to do some target practice. His first thought was to go to a park, but he didn't want to risk running into any of his classmates. They tried to destroy his things on the best of days, but if they were to see him practicing with a weapon... Well, Izuku didn't want to have to go back to the hardware store so soon. Besides, it was probably better to practice someplace secluded anyway, because if people saw him practicing with a slingshot, and then Viridian started using a slingshot shortly after, then that might be suspicious enough to lead the police to his doorstep, and he'd rather not make Mom worry. So, Pugs were out. He could go to the woods where he used to play with Karchan, but he didn't really know if Karchan still hung out there after school, and he'd really rather stay off his radar right now. So he couldn't go to the woods. That, of course, left the beach. The Goba beach definitely wasn't as pretty as it had been a few decades ago, but that wasn't really the beach's fault, just like it wasn't Izuku's fault that he was useless. It was just kinda a fact of life. Izuku had been introduced to it a few years ago when he tagged along with Kachan and his friends for an afternoon and they'd walked by it. Hey, that's where you should live, Deku. It feel right at home with all the other trash. He'd kinda been right. Yeah, the beach didn't smell the best since the weird fishy smell of the ocean mixed with the rotting piles of garbage, but the ventilation was okay, so it only took a few minutes for Izuku to stop noticing the smell, but it was secluded and peaceful. There wasn't anyone here to beat him up or tell him to kill himself, it was just him and all the other useless garbage that people had thrown away. It was nice. Izuku dug through the piles before he found a piece of sheet metal that wasn't too rusted and set it up against an old washing machine, then stood a few meters back and got out a slingshot. It took him a few tries to figure out how to pinch the marble through the pouch so that he didn't drop it, but soon enough he'd lined up his shot and aimed for the dead center of his makeshift target. Izuku took a deep breath and let go. Now, if he was right, the marble should make a sound when it hit the target and... Well... Either his target didn't actually make a sound, or he'd missed. Of those two possibilities, Izuku had to admit that the latter was much more likely. He looked in the sand under the target, but couldn't see the marble, so his aim was obviously a bit off. He searched for a full two or three minutes before giving up and searching for a tarp to put behind his target instead. He didn't want the trash piles to eat his marbles before he even had the chance to practice, Eventually, Izuku found a tarp that didn't have too many holes in it and dragged it between his target and the washing machine, then put down another tarp on the sand underneath it. Okay, now as long as he managed to shoot in the general area of the target, he shouldn't lose his marbles. Not that he hadn't obviously lost his marbles a long time ago, considering he'd chosen to become a vigilante, so... Dumb joke. He really should stop 
trying to be funny. He still didn't hit the target on his next shot, but the top worked well and caught the marble so he could reuse it. His arms were starting to get sore by the time he finally heard the telltale metallic ding as he hit the target for the first time, and Izuku couldn't help himself as he whooped in excitement and started jumping around, startling a few seagulls that had been trying to find something to eat among the garbage. He flashed with embarrassment before he realized that no one would be annoyed at him for yelling because no one was around, and then he smiled. He'd done it! He'd actually hit the target! By the time the sun was setting, Izuku was able to reliably hit his target and the sheet metal was covered in small dents. He was down a few marbles from when his shots had gone wildly, of course. But overall, Izuku thought that the afternoon had been a success. He felt all warm and happy, and if he didn't know any better, he'd almost say that he was proud. If this was how Kachan felt every time someone told him how awesome he was, then Izuku could see the appeal. Katsuki didn't know how he was supposed to feel. He really shouldn't pity Deku, and he definitely shouldn't feel guilty for how he treated him. The quirkless fucker deserved it for being so weak, right? So then why did Katsuki feel like he was going to throw up every time one of those extras at school told him to jump off a roof? He'd told Deku to jump off a roof. It should be any different if someone else was saying it. But was Deku really as weak as all that? When all the heroes had been sitting on their asses, Deku had been the only one to run forward to try and save him. Did that mean that Deku was strong? Or did it mean that Katsuki was weak? Was he even weaker than Deku if he had to rely on a quirkless weakling like that to save him? No, he had to be strong. He had a quirk that let him make fucking explosions. He was going to be the number one hero, and there was no way Deku or any of those other useless extras were going to stand in his way. He was going to be even better than All Might, but would All Might treat Deku like he had? But all his teachers knew that he was going to be a hero, and they would have told him if he wasn't acting like a hero, right? They were always going on about how Katsuki had what it took, and he was better than everyone else, so he was better than Deku, right? So why did he feel so bad? At first he just thought that Sludge must have just been making him nauseous or something, because there was no logical reason for him to feel this way. He was strong. He obviously wasn't doing anything wrong. But what if he was? Katsuki threw off the covers and went to his computer. He obviously wasn't going to be getting any sleep anytime soon. He might as well do something productive. He found himself looking up how to be a hero. There were obviously the articles that he'd read a million times before about how to apply to hero schools, what it took to get a license and other crap, but that wasn't what Katsuki was really looking for. He frowned before typing something else into the search bar. How is a hero supposed to act? He clicked on a video of All Might and rushed to put the headphones in so that he wouldn't wake up his dad. The hag slept like a rock, so he wasn't worried about her. The interview was a few years old, and All Might grinned as he sat across from the host, the couch sagging under the weight of his massive muscles. The host looked like a baby in comparison, but it was always possible they were smaller than normal because of the quirk. So, All Might, I know that a lot of kids dream of being a hero like you, the host began. <laughs> as well they should, Ahmed laughed. It's a difficult career, and it's definitely not for everyone, but if you have what it takes, it is extremely rewarding. Exactly, and we all know how physically grueling heroism can be, well, but what about emotionally? All Might, what do you think it takes to be a hero at heart, even for those who would never get a license? Hmm, that's a good question. All Might paused for a moment as if he was thinking. I think a hero is someone who gives others hope. They lift others up at every opportunity and encourage them to be better. The people we heroes defend will almost always be weaker than we are. If this wasn't the case, then everyone would defend themselves and heroes wouldn't be the essential career they are today. But it is our responsibility to make sure they find their inner strength and become the best people they can be. What about heroes like Endeavor, who have been known to look down on their fans? I can't speak for every hero, of course, but I personally wouldn't have gotten to the number one spot if I spent my time and energy insulting my fans. Katsuki froze as Alma turned to look at the camera, 
and it felt like he was staring right into his soul. A hero isn't someone who insults others. A hero is kind and comforts people in the midst of disasters. My mentor once taught me that if a person is in need of saving, that means they are going through the worst day of their lives. If you insult them rather than saving them with a smile, are you really, truly saving them? Or are you making the worst day of their lives even worse? That's why I believe a hero should always strive to be kind, make others happy, and give them hope. That is what truly makes a hero. The interviewer laughed and moved on to the next question as the studio audience applauded the nation's symbol of peace, and Katsuki was left to stare at his reflection in the screen as it went dark as the next video in the playlist loaded. Crap. That was chapter 8. Yes, chapter 8. <laughs> Of Viridian the Green Guide, we got a Katsuki POV and some progression of his character, which is really interesting. Elle. I'm uh, excited how we see this progress. Yeah, I hope you liked this video. And till the next time, have a good rest of your day, guys. And bye!